83% of indigenous women in this country, the United States, are likely to experience some form of violence. 83%. This is just one of those cases. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Angela McConnell. Viewer discretion is advised. Angela Lynn McConnell was born on December 20th, 1991 in Eureka, California. She was born to parents Tammy Carpenter and Kevin McConnell. Angela did have a brother and they got along very well. They loved each other very, very much. And it really seemed like family was a, a huge part of Angela's life. Angela was also, along with her family, enrolled in the Hoopa tribe, which was located in Northern California. But she was also of Mojave, Yurok, and Kadruk descent. Angela would later go on to graduate from Hoopa Valley High School, and then she would go on to attend College of the Redwoods, where she would be trying to obtain her nursing degree. But growing up, her, her goal in life was actually to become a writer or a journalist. She was someone who was excellent at writing stories and she loved to write. She wrote many stories. She also loved poetry and she wrote poetry. Everyone described her as an incredibly artistic person, very imaginative. And if a life of writing and, and, and doing poetry was meant for her, she was going to go places with it because that's how talented she was. She was at one point working for the Two Rivers Tribune newspaper. She also worked at a library, again, because of her love of books and writing. At the time of this case, she's 26 years old, and she is in a relationship, a kind of rocky on-again, off-again relationship with a man named Michael Bingham. The relationship between the two wasn't exactly great. Uh, Michael was at times abusive towards Angela. A lot of the times with indigenous cases from what I have kind of researched and read in the past is that most violence committed against indigenous women are committed by non-indigenous people, primarily white people. And this is just yet another one of those stories. As often is the case in abusive relationships like this, unfortunately the abused ends up staying with the abuser because this is like a broken record. I know I've said this a million times, but it isn't easy to leave a relationship like that. You can't just get up and walk away because a lot of these women fear for their lives and reasonably so. This is a story in which you would think, however, that when you find a murdered indigenous woman, typically it's going to be her abuser. That is actually not the case this time. So for whatever reason, at this point, Michael and Angela are actually living in like a transient camp, which is in the middle of this wooded foresty area. This is in Shasta County, California, again, Northern California. And on September 7th, 2018, Tammy Carpenter, Angela's mom, gets a phone call that no mom ever wants to receive and should never receive. But she got this one all the same. Her daughter Angela and Angela's boyfriend Michael were both dead. Both were found shot to death in near this transient camp where they were staying in this wooded area. The Shasta County Sheriff's Department was called to this area around 12 p.m. that day, and it was Michael's sister who made that phone call, the 911 call to report these murders. But it wasn't the sister that actually found them, it was their father. Michael Bingham Sr. had actually gone to the transient camp for whatever reason to maybe talk to Michael Jr., and he found them both shot to death. The only reason he gave to police as to what he was doing out there is that he just wanted to check on them. That's what he said. Tammy w had no idea why Angela was living in a transient camp. It didn't seem like many people in Angela's life really knew why. But when Tammy arrives to the crime scene, this is now a couple of hours later because she lived a few hours away from where this happened, police are, they're not really talking to her, to Angela's mom. She keeps asking, like, I need to talk to the detective, a police officer, anyone, but no one's, like, giving her the time of day when then, kind of out of nowhere, a, a cop or a detective comes up to her and doesn't, like, sympathize with her, doesn't say, I'm sorry for your loss, doesn't do any of that. He just immediately starts grilling her, the mom. And he's very 
blatantly, bluntly asking her, why was she on drugs? Do you know she was on drugs? Do you know she was taking drugs? What kind of drugs was she on? Why is she homeless? Why is she living like a homeless person? Like these are very just aggressive questions that he's asking the mom of this woman who was just shot to death. It actually got to, it was so aggressive that Tammy had to tell them, hey, th we're a very well-educated family. We are like, we are doing well for ourselves. We are hardworking people. We all have jobs. Stop talking to us as if we are lowlifes. Also, my daughter was just shot dead. Can you be a little more, I don't know, sensitive about it? She was demanding, I want to see my daughter. And they're like, no, you can't see her. It's The damage is so bad to her face, you can't even recognize her. Police had to use Facebook um, to look up images of her, I guess. And then they also fingerprinted her. And that's how they determined that the murdered victim was Angela and then also determined it was Michael. They do learn that of the history between Michael and Angela, that Michael was abusive towards Angela. At one point, Angela took out a restraining order against Michael and it lasted for a small amount of time, but eventually the restraining order was just broken. Angela's family would communicate to police another story. And this was about Michael Sr. A week prior to these murders happening, Michael Sr. had approached Michael Jr. very aggressively and violently, and they had this humongous confrontation, the father and son, and Michael Sr. pulled out a gun and pointed it at his own son. But there really isn't much more information about that. Is Michael Sr. considered a suspect in this double homicide? I'm not really sure. The other issue is that according to the family of Angela, the crime scene itself was really horribly looked after and, and treated because there really wasn't much crime scene tape being used. Police officers and like transients and other people were just walking in and out of this crime scene, just trampling over any potential evidence like shoe impressions, and it was just not contained whatsoever. And the, so the problem there became was that there was very, very little physical evidence collected at the crime scene, which when you don't have physical evidence, that's really going to hinder your investigation. Especially since this happened in 2018, you know, with our technology the way it is, they can pull DNA from pretty much anything. They can get fingerprints from basically anything nowadays. And But because of how they handled the scene, it was just like there was just really not much hope of getting any of that evidence. And this is a theme. Uh, when it comes to murdered indigenous women, there seems to be this lack of care, this lack of concern for solving the case that uh, it's just an indigenous woman, whatever. It's uh, what was she on drugs? Probably. Who cares then? You know what I mean? Like. They did confirm that Michael Jr. was on drugs at the time he was heavily involved and they were trying to imply that Angela was getting into drugs herself. There really seems to be kind of a, not really a confirmed on that, but that's just based on, I guess, witnesses who have told police this information. But that's another stigma is that, oh, okay, if they're on drugs, ugh, whatever, they asked for it. No, they didn't. There is this there is this other issue going on where when drug addicts or people on drugs are murdered, people just don't seem to care. They just seem like, well, you know what? They're on drugs. They live this dangerous life. It's going to happen to them. That doesn't mean their murder doesn't deserve to be solved. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's frustrating, especially when you have an indigenous woman plus drugs plus living in a transient camp. It seems to be like this trifecta of, oh, well, who cares? Let's move on. Angela has just become yet another tick, another statistic, another number added to the long list of numbers of indigenous women statistics. As of 2021, 83% of indigenous women in this country, in the United States, experience some form of violence, typically from a non-indigenous person. It's usually about 96% of non-indigenous people committing these violent acts on indigenous women. When it comes to just Northern California, roughly 50% of indigenous women experience domestic violence like Angela had experienced. What's more staggering is that in California, the entire state of California, only 9%, 9% of indigenous women murders are ever solved, 9%. That means that 91% 
of murdered indigenous women or missing indigenous women, they just go unsolved. It's just, that is, that is, that's unfathomable. That's insane. When you compare violence committed against indigenous women to violence committed against Caucasian women, indigenous women are 1.7 times more likely to experience domestic violence than white women. They are two times more likely to be raped than white women. They are also three times more likely to be murdered compared to white women. Three times more likely. As of 2022, there are over 5,400 reported cases of some type of violence against indigenous women in the country. This includes uh, domestic violence, rape, missing women, and murdered women. That is only what is reported. And it's actually been kind of documented that there are likely more numbers than that of non-reported violence against indigenous women. And a lot of the times it's because they know that nobody's going to care, that nobody's going to look into it, that nobody's going to investigate it, that it's just yet another indigenous woman who cares. Some other statistics, 55% of indigenous women are abused by their partners overall, by like their significant other. 40% of sex trafficking victims are indigenous. 56% of indigenous women experience sexual violence. Almost 50% of indigenous women have reported stalking cases against them. Overall in the entire country, indigenous women are murdered 10 times more than all other ethnicities. 10 times. And unfortunately, Angela McConnell is just added to the list and that's all it seems to be. Her family, her mom and her brother especially, have gone on several marches for justice for Angela. They have fought tooth and nail with to get any information from the police, but the police, the sheriff's department actually, does not communicate with Angela's mom at all. Every time she tries to call, they get no response. It's almost as if they're not even working the case. They are trying to put pressure on the sheriff's department to please find out who killed her. I mean, have they looked into Michael Sr.? I mean, he was the one who found them. He, he had a gun pointed to his own son just a week prior. Like, hello, that's at least worth investigating a little bit, right? To see if maybe he was the one to do this. They don't know the motive. They don't know why this happened. I mean, what are you going to steal from them? There wasn't anything to steal. Could this have been a drug-related murder? Maybe. But again, when you have murder committed against people who are on drugs, it seems to be like, oh, well, whatever. They're people, folks. They are human beings. Everyone makes mistakes in their life. I've made them, you've made them. Everybody has made different levels of mistakes. It doesn't mean they should be murdered for those mistakes. And you also certainly shouldn't be murdered because of who you were born as. Because if you're indigenous, it seems to be you have to be on your, on your lookout everywhere you go. You have to turn around, look over your shoulder everywhere you go because if someone stalks you, rapes you, or murders you, no one's gonna solve it. But at any rate, Angela's family has they have put out billboards, several billboards throughout the area for any information that might help lead to capturing who did this. They have, like I said, they have gone on marches. They have you know, gone to state capitals and all of this to get anyone to at least at least look as if they care. And that's the other thing is that you don't see, you know, if there's a white murder victim, a white woman who's murdered, they don't have to do marches. They don't have to go to state capitals. They don't have to plead and plead and plead to police to get any information about their murdered loved one. They don't have to do that. You don't see uh, a sea of white people marching with justice for so-and-so. I mean, I'm sure, yes, you do at times, but th every time an indigenous person is murdered, it seems like you have to go on these marches just to get people to know, to get the public to know. There really isn't much public information about this case in general. There isn't many news articles about it. I typed in Angela McConnell. I get one page on Google. The second page is about Mitch McConnell's wife. It's just, it's it's wild. Like this is a murdered victim. And listen, Michael was also killed and he had committed domestic violence against Angela. And that's, you have that, you're in that tricky of like, God, do, like, do I, might, do I f feel sympathy for someone like that who was also murdered? I mean, he was shot in the head. He was killed. Possibly by his own dad. Allegedly. Maybe. Who knows? But, and does anyone know? Because no one's really looking into it. So you, you do have that weird, like, ah, do, am I sad? Like, I, a person is dead. A person is murdered. 
if he was committing domestic violence against Angela, which by all accounts it sounds like he was, uh, he should be maybe in jail for it. Maybe, you know, that kind of thing. Murdered, it's kind of, it's just, I don't, you know, how do you feel? How do you feel about that? How are you supposed to feel? Because there's a part of me is like, oh well. But then I also fall into that like, well, he was a piece of shit, so he deserved it kind of like thing. But is that fair? Is that right? It's tricky. <laughs> I just like, I don't like, I care more about Angela being murdered. I care more about Angela's case being solved than I do about the Michael side of it, which I know sounds terrible. I guarantee you if this was a prominent, well-liked uh, and beloved white man who was murdered alongside an indigenous woman, maybe in a nice little apartment or a nice little home, they probably would care about it more, uh, to be honest with you. But because this was kind of like a scummy white guy who was abusive, they were found at a transient camp, he was on drugs, it's unfortunately doesn't help Angela at all. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if um, like a beloved white person is killed alongside an indigenous person, and if the scenario is different and they're in a more pleasant um situation and environment you would get a lot of care about this but does that make sense i don't know if that makes sense but at any rate that's where the case stands angela mcconnell and michael bingham jr their murders are remain unsolved there is almost no information about him there i don't know where the investigation is at if there even is one at this point i know that over the course of one year they had three different different detectives assigned to this case which means they let one go from it then did another one, let that one go from it, and another one, which also goes to show, like, uh, just keep throwing people on there, just whatever. But that there is nothing. Like, I don't, I don't know what evidence they have. I don't know if they've tested guns. I don't know if they've questioned people, if they've brought people in. I don't know if they have a person of interest or a suspect. There's really very little about this. And again, you have to go on marches and you have to go on these, you know, big parades with posters and billboards to even get anyone to look at this case and take it seriously. And so in hopes of videos like this, not just mine, but other people who make videos on this case or any indigenous person's case, hopefully it helps. Hopefully it gets more people to see, but who knows, you know? Angela should be treated like every other murder victim that exists on this planet. That's just the, that's just the truth, but she isn't. But somebody somewhere out there has to know the truth behind this. They have to know the reason. They, I'm sure somebody knows the whys, the who's, the what's. Killers love to talk. A lot of times in cases like this, the assailant, typically a white male, they'll brag about it openly because they know people won't really care to look further into it. And if you think I'm being dramatic or you think I'm just being silly or whatever, that's, that's on you, that's not on me. <laughs> I have noticed in the past that it upsets people when I, or when anyone says, you know, oh, white people commit more crimes about indigenous people or against them. And it seems to upset people like, well, it's also blah, 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 blah. Like, again, that's on you. That's not on me. It says something about you as a person if you get angry when someone is just talking about the injustices against a certain demographic of people committed by another certain demographic of people. These are just, the, this is just the truth, the stats, the, this is it. This is what reality is. You should be angry that indigenous persons' cases are just brushed off more often than not. You should be angry that they are not, there's so many of these cases that aren't even reported because they know nobody will care. That should make you mad. Not some guy saying, well, white people commit more crimes against indigenous people. Or how dare you say this against white people? I'm sorry. <laughs> But again, you're upset at the wrong thing. I'm not saying all white people are bad. Hi, I'm white. Uh, I'm just saying the stats, that's the truth of the matter. I know I've rambled on a lot about in the injustices and the frustrations, but that's what it is. I'm just, it's just frustrating when you talk about cases like this and there's nothing to talk about. At any rate, somebody somewhere out there knows the truth about what happened to Angela and to Michael. If that person is you. You can report any information you have anonymously. Because uh, the killers, like I said earlier, they brag, they talk, right? especially about cases like this, because again, no one's gonna care. But someone does care. Her family cares. I care. People out there watching care. They care about someone being arrested for this, for a double homicide, and they've gotten away with it. They, they're getting away with it because of who they killed. That doesn't mean they will only kill indigenous people. They might kill more other people that are not indigenous and then we'll start caring, right, maybe? But we don't want them to kill more people. We want them to face justice and go to prison so they don't kill more people. 
You can report it anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. If you have any information about the murder of Angela McConnell and Michael Bingham Jr., please contact the Major Crimes Unit at 530-245-6135. Please help Angela and Michael get the justice they both rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case, True Crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you like true crime and you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. I tell many true crime stories here. I also tell short form true crime stories over on two different TikTok pages. I'm just balancing between the two because you never know when one might go away forever. So you can find those uh, TikTok links either at some point in the beginning or at the end, they pop up here somewhere. And also both links are in the link tree in the description of this video below. And in that link tree, you'll also find my merch store. We sell like t-shirts and hoodies. We do ship all over this entire planet, the whole thing, all of it, every square inch of it, even the ocean, maybe. I don't know if you have a home in the ocean, We'll ship there, whatever. Anyway, rambling. Go ahead and check it out, link below if you want to. Also, in the description below, you will find my email address. If you want to recommend a case to me, just send me a super duper quick email. My email, I've already said it, listed below. <laughs> um, just email me the name of the case or the person that it happened to, where it happened and when it happened. So those are the three big things to help me find it. And I will add it to my list. The list is now over 6,300 names long. I pick the cases I cover each time at random. I cannot promise you when I'll get to the case you recommend, but I will get to it at some point eventually, either here on YouTube or on TikTok. You can also see the list. The list is in the on the link tree. Uh, it's in alphabetical order for the most part, unless it's broken down by certain categories, but you can scroll through it and see if the name's already on there or not. But that's it for this uh, video. That's it for this story, this case, true crime or -er errors. So we shall see ya for the next one. And until then, ta-ta for now, true crime, Arunage. See, nah, see. What if I did a whole video like this? See, talking like this. Man, he committed a murder, you see, and he got away with it. Man. <laughs> nope, I won't do that. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> Say, oh.